As we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report, which he writes each week with new issues on Monday. Updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out under the newsletter tab. It's only $97, folks. You see the action going on with currencies. We're going to talk about it right now. That comes with a 90, excuse me, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you got nothing to risk. You get a subscriber webinar as well. And if you have some time over the holidays, man, Teddy's got two outstanding webinars under the services tab. One of them, capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. We were just talking about options. And the other one, candlestick patterns, Japanese candlestick patterns. Services tab. We all might have a little extra time during the holidays. And let's just jump right into it. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got some action in uh, notes and bonds in the U.S. dollar today. Oof. Um, you know, Teddy, I was I always take a look at your Tiger Forex report. You send it over early, uh, first day of the week, and then we send it out. And yeah, let's talk about some of the action. I know you know you have downside target levels, you got upside, but boy, we've had quite a trend here. Can we start with the dollar? Absolutely, for sure. Where do you want to go at lead off with that? Well, I was looking at your charts. I mean, downside target level, I think you had 10121. And we're sitting at literally 101.21 right now, Teddy, the tick, as I pull it up. Um, mm -hmm. So now that we've reached, you had that out for subscribers earlier this week. Now we've reached that downside target level. I found myself saying, okay, um, I wonder what Teddy says we do from here as we've reached mm -hmm. kind of that at least short-term target pretty quickly. Yeah, well, you know what's kind of funny is that both the U.S. dollar index target as well as notes and bonds are right at those – buffering targets that I was looking for right now. So the, the, the key thing is with the dollar is that this uh, right now the bearish move in the dollar index is a result of you know yields put retracting. We have an almost three month rally going on in notes and bonds and we're pressing new highs right now as we speak. Now I think we're coming into a very good corrective area right now as far as like where we're, we're topping out at because we haven't seen the Fed ease yet you know so right now you know the, the market's always forward thinking especially with derivatives you know so and right now the market is factoring in right now at least a quarter point rate cut well they haven't even solidified the fact that they're pausing yet you know so i, I f think that right now you got to be very careful with your longs right now when it comes to notes and bonds or your shorts against the dollar because how much more can we stretch this 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 move this trend right now without actual fundamental action? You know, so and especially yeah. if any economic numbers come in that are inflationary. You know, cool. so right. so I think you have to be very cautious right now if you've been riding the trend short the dollar and long uh, notes and bonds. Now is a good time to tighten up your stops because it, if even if we do continue to push the trend, I would think you're going to expect to get a real choppy trade right now without any fundamental confirmation right now. It's a great point, man, because I found myself thinking along some similar lines. At least I keep seeing the yield on the 10-year, and I think we're under 3.85% right now. And I found mm -hmm. myself saying, okay, I, you know, where is my risk-reward, right, on either side? And I said, can we really drop to like 3.5 or 3 and a quarter? Of course we could, okay? Sure. But, boy, that's really tough when the Fed is still sitting at 5.5, and yes. you have to go out 10 years to get to 3. I said, well, how does that? So that I, 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 I understand the point. I appreciate it, man, because I found mm -hmm. myself saying, we're ahead of the game. The market, as you say, they get ahead of the game. And right. now it seems like we, you know, it's ahead of the game for a while, it seems, as we're at 3, sure. 5, down from 5, which is bonkers, man. And, and um, I hope your a, listeners yeah. really paid attention to what you just said about the risk-reward. You know, is there still potential on these trends? Absolutely. But as far as what you're gaining potentially, you know, versus where the other SI action is to the downside, you know, um, you yeah. really have to weigh those options right now, for sure, you know. Cool. So. Yeah. It wouldn't be crazy if the tenure was at like four and a quarter, right? Or, you know, no. the, like those types. I mean, just not crazy at all as an obvious. Sure. That's the, yeah, exactly. I mean, it doesn't right. mean we're not going to be back under four in an instant, but sure. those types of moves, like you say, choppy. And, and for even, sure. let's say the Fed is going to start cutting rates, even at the next meeting. We still should have some sort of pullback and, and a raising in yields. Markets don't just go in one direction, you know. Right. So this trend is pretty stretched, it's pretty steep, yeah. you know. So for yeah. us to at least have a little. The market pushing yields higher for just a short term, that's normal, right? That would be, it would be, you know, a couple of weeks of having higher yields before we go back on the lower yield trend is normal. And I think we're kind of coming into that phase, I would think, you know. So. Sure. 
pretty remarkable yields almost end the year where we began them with uh, quite the roller coaster, <laughs> but pretty close to that price point. Uh, do you want to jump to maybe the yen? I want to get to crude yes. as well, but maybe the yen because we got some action, sure. of course, and that that's driving. We got gold with some action. We're, we're sitting at 142 and change. What do you think about the yen as we're just chopping around a little bit so far this week? Yeah, you know what? I think that you know in this Tiger Forex report, I said that of the yen, I think, is one of the currencies you have to be really careful with. I think it's going to be range bound for the rest of this week. You know, I mean, could we see a nice small rally or even try, try and hit the lows again? Eh, I mean, there's nothing fundamentally right now that's going to dictate that. Of all the currency pairs versus the dollar, I think you're going to have a sleepy trade here. So I'd be very cautious. It's going to be wedging, and I would expect it to break out either to the downside or to the upside, you know, sometime next week. You know, but right now we we fell the low that was hit a week and a half ago was just short of our downside target, and without the BOJ doing anything yet, which we know they are going to do something in 2024, you know, but that also goes in line with us. I mean, if they're going to start, you know doing anything it's not going to be anything severe you know it's not like they're going to be like we were on a campaign of raising rates for meeting after meeting after meeting you know the japanese they're going to maybe do one rate hike you know potentially of a quarter point you know sometime between now and the next six months you know so is it bearish the u.s dollar yen I think it's keeping us from hitting those those uh, hot multi-month highs that we hit a couple months ago, you know. But especially unless we do raise another quarter point, I think you're range bound right now. The, this 140 level, the 145, is going to be a tough trade, you know. I would think at least for the next couple of weeks, and then potentially, especially if we get past our next Fed meeting, you know, and then there's no longer any sense of perhaps another hike, and we're going to be on at least a pausing basis. Then I think you could start to see us maybe hit lower lows and see the yen back down in the 135 level, you know, just because of our Fed going on a pause and then the potential, no matter what, of the BOJ doing something, you know, to yeah. uh, do some kind of raising, whether it's raising rates or quantitative, you know, they could do, there's multiple things that the BOJ can do at their, at their disposal, you know, and it's hard to guess what they're going to do because they haven't done very much over the past 30 years. <laughs> the last yeah year you know so the crystal ball is very foggy when it comes to the japanese because they don't do things very often or very quickly so but yeah i think you're very range bound i would not get you know overly bearish yet until we have the fundamental confirmations um i think it is a sell rally forecast but it's going to be tight i think between 140 and 145 now if we breach the 145 area and you see for instance yields going higher and the dollar getting stronger well, then maybe we could get a run back at that 150 threshold that the BOJ has. But as we, how much – nothing right now is going to cause that market action. So you're talking about a big trend that would take weeks to occur, which puts us into and the new year. Just to wrap it up, as this is the last one, what do you think about crude at 75 bucks? What do you think next year? Uh, I like it. I like it going a little bit higher, especially with all the conflict with the, uh, you know in the Middle East. Teddy, thank you so yep. much for a great 2023, man. We'll talk to you next year. Have a great thank holiday, you. safe holiday, man. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year, Teddy.